Hi, Dr. Peter Ward here with some quick anatomy correlates for you guys to hit the ground running in OPP, clinical skills. This is not going to be a comprehensive view of all the topographical terms you're going to have to know, but it'll be enough to get you rolling. First thing I want to draw your attention to on the skeleton here is the vertebral column. And the vertebral column is made up of the vertebra. And the really obvious palpable part of that from the posterior approach is the spinous processes. You've got those for the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and pretty much in the sacral region right there as well. Now as a composite, one thing you'll notice about the vertebra is they make a group curve in the thoracic region, this backward or outward curve is called the thoracic kyphosis, and this inward portion that you see in the lumbar region is called the lumbar lordosis. And we'll take a look at that on the person right now. All right, I'd like to introduce Ashley. She'll be helping us out with the palpatory anatomy. That is uh, Brittany behind the camera right there as well. So. Hi. Thanks, Brittany. So, we're going to have uh, Ashley turn, face the opposite direction. And here, right on the midline, there we go, you can palpate the spinous processes of the vertebra. If you have any difficulty with that, it's usually not too difficult, you can have the person you're working with give themselves a hug. And that's going to make the processes become a little more apparent. You can just count vertebrae all the way down to the lumbar region and to the base of the sacrum. So, if we have you turn to the side, You'll notice the, the thoracic kyphosis is not typically overly prominent in people. If it is, that tends to be a sign that there's a problem. Likewise, the lumbar lordosis, or the curvature of the lumbar region right here, tends to disappear in certain musculoskeletal complaints. It tends to get increased in other musculoskeletal complaints. And go ahead and face with your back to the camera. Thank you. On either side of the vertebral column, there's going to be a large muscle group called the erector spinae that runs all the way down to the base of the sacrum and hip bones. Top of the hip bones are referred to as the iliac crest. To palpate those, you just push until you find hard bony prominence on either side. That is the iliac crest, and the iliac crest and sacrum where the rectus spinae arise from, and they're what maintains those curvatures of the spinal cord. Let's take a look at that on the skeleton. All right, looking at the same structures and moving a little further on the skeleton, here are the iliac crest that we were palpating just a moment ago. Top of the hip bone, the ilium, it's one of the three bones that makes up the pelvic bones, and it's going to be iliac crest right here. As we travel a little further up on your erector spinae run, sometimes on your partners you'll be able to palpate the coastal angle, which is where the ribs make their maximum outward kind of a boundary posteriorly, and then just past that, in this upper thoracic region, we run into the scapula, the shoulder bone, the shoulder blade. It has a medial border that we care about. It also has a lateral and superior border, but we won't focus on those. Another clinically important piece is this inferior angle. If you connect the two inferior angles, you should be looking at the spinous process of C of T, thoracic vertebra 7. And on your partner's palpate for this ridge, very pronounced, that's the spine of the scapula, and it leads to a little shelf of bone just above the humerus here. This is called the acromion. Now let's take a look at that on partner. Again, looking at some of the landmarks of the back, go ahead and turn. So if we have your partner kind of grab, give themselves a big hug, they're going to expose, lean forward a little bit, and expose the posterior angle of right here of the ribs, that is going to be the coastal angle. And then, go ahead and straighten back up and relax. A little further away, away from the erector spinae, you've got the medial border of the scapula. This should be actually fairly easy to palpate. There's a lateral and a superior border as well. The medial border is more easily found. And on its underside, you've got the inferior angle of the scapula. And connect those two across. If I can palpate the spinous process just at that level, that's T7. Moving up, we're going to find a horizontal shelf of bone that's part of the scapula right here. That is the scapular spine. And it's going to drop all the way up here to the point of the shoulder. And that is also part of the scapula called the acromion. Actually, go ahead and lift your arm up. Posterior, there's a little fold of skin that's covering the armpit or the axilla. This is the posterior axillary fold, and it's made up of the skin tissue covering the latissimus dorsi muscle. And go ahead and turn. And arm up. Same thing happens anteriorly here with the anterior axillary fold covering the pectoralis muscles heading up to the proximal. And we'll see more of those in just a moment.